Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Another video with the Golf R. It's been getting a lot of screen time lately and to be honest, it's been getting a lot of miles put on it as well. I am loving this car at the moment. It's had a lot of adventures, which have of course equated to a lot of videos. Uh, it's had its first Nürburgring outing, as I'm sure you've seen on numerous channels actually. And today's video is partially a bit of a follow on from that because I'm sure you would know the car has developed an issue, an issue which I literally have no idea what it is. This car has had no shortage of track days or hard driving. It's probably done about 20 now in my ownership, um, but it was the first uh, trip to the Nürburgring, arguably the most intense outing it's ever had. And those of you who've been there would understand just how intense that place is for cars, even when they're all modified and everything like that. So yeah, I'm at a bit of a loose end really what the problem is, and I'm really hoping that maybe one of you watching will be able to help me. So this car is a car I bought stock about two years ago, a stock manual Mark 7 Golf R, a car which I have loved uh, for a long time. It's my second Golf R, long-term viewers would remember my original one. And this whole project, the ongoing project, is something which is a bit of a dream of mine, really. It's something I've always wanted to do, to build a purpose-built track car. And even though it has changed an awful lot in those two years, of course, going from a completely stock 300 horsepower manual car to arguably a bit of a track weapon, it is still not complete. These projects are never finished, never ever finished. And for that reason, uh, I will never sell this car. I absolutely love it and I can see myself hopefully doing some track days in it in decades to come. Um, so I think people that have, well, maybe necessarily uh, just seen this car online and just commenting uh, almost blind from the videos think that this is its complete look uh, and its complete state, but that could not be more incorrect. And with this car being such a long-term project, something which I will never stop modifying, uh, in the first two years, it has obviously been, you know, full steam ahead, getting as much done as I can to therefore share it with you guys. But over the course of a project, things will change. Wheels will change, the look will change, aerodynamics will change, gearboxes might change, wink, wink. Uh, you never know what the future holds. And that is the same for this car. But it's not just the car that will change uh, in terms of upgrades and additions and things like that. Things will go wrong. An upgrade doesn't necessarily mean that it would work or over a long period of time, it would still keep working, that it won't fail. A car like this is so heavily modified, it's almost running double the power of what it should do. And I'm asking an awful lot of it. And I think, to be honest, getting real for a second actually, when this car was shared online through my videos and other people's videos, Misha's as well, uh, as you would have seen, I think some of the people that said what was said, those of you who've read the comments will know, the fact that it's a shambles, uh, it's a, a complete mess, and it's so out of its comfort zone, I think is not only wrong personally, but it is also quite offensive, if I should say that really, because I mean, you know, I put a lot of time and money into this car and it isn't finished. It's a car that I absolutely love, but problems are gonna happen, things are gonna happen which people don't necessarily like, but it's my car, I do what I want with it, and ultimately, I'm just having a great time sharing it with you. But going on to this problem then, it's a weird one, let me explain. A long story cut short then, is essentially the car goes into limp mode. Um, now, the thing is with limp mode is it can basically mean an endless list of things. Now, the problem actually uh, came about when Misha was driving the car over at the Nürburgring. We thought initially, uh, don't mind the water dripping out, I've just washed the car <laughs> from the vents on either side of the bonnet. Um, now, initially we thought the issue was to do with temperatures. It was a very, very hot day when we were filming those videos, I think upwards of 30 degrees. And so naturally you'd think temperature would be the cause of the issue, some sort of fail safe mode that the car would just go into and not allow you to do any more just because it thinks that it's too hot and won't be able to, you know, carry on as is. However, then when the next day when actually Misha drove the car and filmed his video, um, it was eight o'clock in the morning, it was like 10, 15 degrees uh, colder, yet the problem was still coming about. And naturally in all the comments as well, a lot of people were saying what they think it could be. And I'll be honest, there was a whole list of things which 
people were suggesting that could be wrong with the car. Things like a battery short causing various weird electronical issues. Something to do with the adaptive cruise control not being properly coded out and therefore thinking that the cars had a crash because of the g-force. Uh, things like oil surge or that the car needs a retune or it's just not happy with how much it's being revved. Now I think a certain amount of those are logical to be honest. I think oil surge could well be maybe the, the cause of the problem. Uh, the car is running the stock sump, um, so maybe a baffled sump uh, would be the right thing to do. It's something which has been on the list. I mean, most things in the world <laughs> are on the list to go on this car. Um, but anyone out there that's running a track orientated MQB car with a baffled sump, let me know if um, you've been having any problems, please. Now, the fault code that was actually coming up, actually, I should probably touch on that, was basically maximum 4,000 RPM. You can't go over this. It's going to cut all power. As you can see on screen, this is what happened when Misha was driving the car. And actually, when I got the car back from the UK, I actually went to Players down at Goodwood shortly after returning back from the UK. In fact, a couple of days after. Um, I was doing some passenger rides that day, um, and the problem was there as well. And it's a problem I've never had before. It's just something which the Nürburgring has brought out of it. And, and such is life. But the car drove back for the Nürburgring. It drove back from Goodwood and obviously is still running today. Um, however, something is not happy and something needs to be done to stop that message coming up. Now, I think initially that the fact that we thought that it was down to temperatures uh, was logical because the car was getting extremely hot. And I think one of the most common misconceptions off the back of these videos at the Nürburgring was the cooling upgrades on the car. Of course, I have an upgraded intercooler. It's currently running uh, a Wagner intercooler, and it also does have an oil cooler, something which I think not a lot of people actually realize is on the car tucked away in here behind the grill at the bottom is a racing line oil cooler. So the car does have sufficient cooling upgrades, but yet the car did get very hot. I know a lot of MQB cars uh, that were there that weekend at the Nürburgring and also have been there when it's been warm, have struggled with heat. No matter the generation, Mark 7, 7.5, or even the Mark 8. And actually, if you are wondering what the temps were getting up to, the coolant was touching over 90, which is something which is never done before. And the oil temps were actually in the high 120s. I think 128 was what I saw uh, at the highest point, actually midway through the lap. Now, don't get me wrong. I am well aware that those temperatures are um, not optimal <laughs> at all. But Misha was driving the car at the time, obviously a very skilled driver at the Nürburgring. Um, and so I think for the car to overheat then, I think <laughs> If it's going to overheat, it's going to overheat now with him driving the car. I was doing some laps as well, as you've seen on the channel, and the temps were getting up to maybe 115, 116, which is normally where this car sits when I drive the car. Normally this car does, you know, your average just casual track days, 15 minute sessions at max, um, and the oil temp actually stays below 110 in most cases, which shows that the cooling system is working. But I think maybe why the temps were that high was a mixture between the ambient temperature being so hot, the track that we were driving was so intense, you're on the power so much and it's just so long, uh, and also the fact that a very, very skilled driver was at the helm of the car. That though, annoyingly, is not the cause of the issue because when I was down at Goodwood recently, it was not as hot at all, yet it was still popping up, which is very weird, not temperature related. Now, naturally, this car will do most of its driving in the summer months when it is obviously uh, a lot warmer. So I think some cooling upgrades do need to happen. Of course, I do obviously have the essentials in place, but maybe some extra bits uh, can be done. Uh, any suggestions are welcome. Of course, please do let me know. Anyone uh, that runs a similar setup, um, then please let me know what you're running, really, how you're finding it and, and what you'd recommend. But ultimately, this problem is something which I don't definitively know. And of course, the most logical thing for me to have done at the time was to log the codes. Unfortunately, me being me, I didn't because I was very busy actually whilst I was at the Nürburgring, I was literally filming video after video. Bit of a lame excuse, but yes, I didn't have the time. But yes, this video, long and short, just calling out to anyone who has had this issue and has maybe found a way of resolving it, um, then please, please, please let me know uh, in the comments down below as to what you did uh, and basically what the reason for it was because this car gets driven hard a lot. Um, and I don't understand how this hasn't been a problem before, um, and now all of a sudden it has done.
Whilst we're here though with the Golf R, I think it'd be rude not to give you guys just a general update about the car aside from this problem that we're having, some of the things which you can expect coming up soon, and basically some of my rough plans on the car. I do need to do something about this, so then I stop getting so many messages and comments about to change it or to take it off. I'm not taking it off. This car is literally built for a purpose, and everything that you see on it does serve a purpose as well. This does, but I do have some plans to alter it to maybe uh, please a little bit more of the general audience out there, uh, because yes, I understand that maybe to a general golf art enthusiast, it is probably a little bit strange, but personally, I would rather have something that is substantial and actually serve as a purpose, rather than just having some cheap plastic stuff stuck on with some self tappers on the front of my car. But hey ho, uh, going into the car though, there is some bits which I want to change in here. Um, now actually, the cool works, something which has been installed in the car for a while, uh, an epic bit of kit, something which I think is essential for any manual car, regardless of whether you're gonna put it on track or not. But something which I've always kind of thought about the car, uh, or sorry, the, the shifter, shall I say, is that it could be a little bit taller. So I think ideally, if it was just a couple of inches taller, it will naturally be closer to where my hand sits on the wheel as well. Um, so I think that is something which I need to invest in and research to see if it's possible to get some sort of extension, really, on the shifter itself just to make it feel a little bit easier when shifting through the gears. I do also need to make some very slight changes to the wing as well. Had a chat with some of the stewards over at the Nürburgring and they would be generally a little bit happier if some changes were made to this, mainly to do with the end plates. So that is gonna be done as well. Um, but ultimately, as I mentioned, this car is always gonna be going through changes. Uh, I think the look of the car needs to change as well. I do love the lapis blue. It is the Golf R color. As we know, my original Mark 7.5 Golf R um, was lapis blue as well. It's a lovely color and looks really clean actually with the gray accents that we've got throughout the interior and exterior. But I think it does need to change. Visually, I do have some ideas. So that is gonna happen uh, maybe fairly soon. So you have to wait and see about that. Uh, but yes, I mean, as you can imagine, I can't give everything away. There's always stuff being planned for this car. It is a car that's gonna stick around for a long, long time. I will never ever get rid of this car. I think it's fairly obvious that I put a little bit too much money into it that I can hardly resell it, put it back to standard or anything like that. But that was never my intentions when, bu when building this car anyway. It's an ongoing project. I'm sure some of you out there can appreciate that. And going back to what I said, things do go wrong. It's just a shame that right now I have no idea what it is. And to be honest, I can't really um, arrange any more track days because until I really find out what the problem is and get it sorted, it will be a bit of waste of time and money. I think though that, I mean, my two cents into this situation is I think the two most logical things that it could be, again, I still don't really have any definitive, definitive answer, is either the oil surge issue or surprisingly the active cruise control because I've heard some stories that this apparently needs to be coded out or something because it has obviously crash detection and various things. I'm really hoping that it is a quick fix and something which is fairly easy and cheap to sort as well. But either way, that's where we are. That's where we are, really. Yeah. <laughs> let me know, please. Please do let me know because I really want to get this sorted as soon as I can. Because there are still a lot of things which I have planned for the car, which I need to get done before the season ends as well. And of course, plenty more uh, videos uh, to come as well. For now though, at least, I know it's been a little bit of a talky video, but I just wanted to make this video just to get the whole thing out there and to just, you know, call out a bit of help and to see if anyone out there can help me. Um, but yeah, that is it for me today though. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come. Oh, 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 oh,